Hey, if you like to shop on Amazon like most everybody, you can help Southgate Media Group out by going to southgatemediagroup.com and look at the top. There's an Amazon link. You can click that, log into your account, and a portion of everything you buy will help support the podcast of Southgate Media. So it's cheap, it's easy, and you're just doing the same thing that you would do anyways. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to the Krypton The All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Hey guys, before we get started, I just want to say, if you haven't done so yet, but check out the Aspiring Kryptonian podcast as well as the Last Sons of Krypton podcast, both hosted by friends of ours, good time in the world of Superman. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of blue, the man of tomorrow. And with me to fight the forces of evil is my better half, the Superman of red, the man of steel, Mr. James Cole. Hey. That's funny. Superman red, Superman blue, and we gonna, we're going to be talking about Superman red and blue today. Superman red and blue is very interesting when they decide to do this because, you know, they've done all these series of, like, black and white, you know, and then what was crazy was people started arguing online, like, why isn't it red, white, and blue? I'm like, well, first of all, Superman's colors aren't red, white, and blue. They're blue, red, and gold if you want to throw a third color in there. Um, but they've done these where it's like Batman black and white, where they just use the two colors to really try to tell the story. And I think it's, it's interesting. And they, well, they even got a Harley Quinn, a uh, uh, red, what is it? Red and black, black, black and white and red. Yeah. And that one, they threw in the three. And I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, I do think what's cool about this is a lot of the writers aren't the names that you really see around Superman right now. Like there's no short by Mark Wade or anything like that. Um, I'm looking at volume one right now and or issue one, volume one, because I, you know, I really like the short story format. It's fun to have books like this where it's just short little stories with your character that you, and it really helps get to the core of Superman. Now for volume one or issue one, should I say, what cover did you get, James? Oh, Lee Bermejo. Yep. Me too. One thing I love about Bermejo, his art, is Lee Bermejo draws Lee Bermejo's Superman and Lee Bermejo's Batman. He is, I think, the only artist I can think of, and I'm thinking, that has their own distinctive character style. Like, when they, he doesn't come in and draw, like, Batman for whatever the continuity is. When he does a book or a cover, it's his Batman. Yeah, all his detective covers, it's his Batman. So it's his style of those characters, and they're just cemented that wherever you see his drawings, it's that version. Mm Mm-hmm. And I like I mean, it's kind of like Gary Frank and Jim Lee. They're similar, but but not exactly. But the thing is, Jim Lee's drawn for Superman for the New 52, for uh, post-pre-New 52 continuity. Like, there's similarity, and then he drew some in Rebirth because he always does, like, the first designs or whatever. But there's similarity in them. But, like, yeah. I can say, oh, that Superman's drawn by Jim Lee, but it's not Jim Lee's Superman. Right. You know, I was going to say, yeah, if you – I was going to say, if you look at certain Superman, you can be like, oh, yeah, that's that's Jim Lee. Or, you know, certain Batman. Um, Even like, Faber. That's – Hush, you know, like, yeah, iconic. That's, that's Jim Lee's Batman. Um, and that's that's what you would normally see from his Batman. But did he ever? Yeah, because he. I mean, he drew New Fifty Two Batman because he drew yeah. the first uh, Justice arc League book. of Justice League. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're you're completely right that that Lee Bermejo has a set Batman and a set Superman. Like, you, yeah, you're completely right about that. I mean, even when you look at Alex Ross's uh, paintings of his of his characters. They are not all identical. They are not all the same Superman and same Batman. You know, he does have a little bit of a difference in, in depending on the timeline and the character and, and the book. But 
yeah, Lee Bermejos have always been the same. Let's dig into Superman Red and Blue issue. And I really felt like this deserved its own kind of just, we need to take our time and talk about this. Because the first, okay, the first story, and I'm trying to see what the title is, because some of them, like, it just says at the end. It's like, actually called Untitled. Was it? Because that's what I was trying yes. to check here. Um, yep. Untitled. You're right. So what's neat about this one is it has a little box that says, See World's Finest, number 192 for 193 for his first visit. So it's tying in kind of this past history. And this first yeah. one is a very Which is one of the, sorry, which is one of the um, um, things that we uh, are looking forward to uh, for getting stories coming out from New Front, or New Frontier, the infinite frontier as it is now. Yes. Being able to have stories that connect back to something, you know, specific, not just mainline continuity. Exactly. And this is one of them. Um, <clears throat> this story is very interesting because this story is about Superman going to visit a foreign country uh, in the past. And what happens is he basically loses his powers at Superman and is put in a prison camp and is beaten and tortured in a prison camp. For eight months. And now, as Clark Kent, he has to go back and interview the guy, Nikola... Nicholas Koslov. Koslov. Um, and, you know, he says, I was held for eight months, eight months of starvation, indoctrination, forced labor, eight months of being used as a propaganda tool to prove the weakness of the West. So, right there, I mean, this is a psychological blow. To Clark Superman. And then he has to go back and interview this guy. And he's, he's scared. Like he has psychologically been damaged and hurt. Now he's full power Superman. And he's scared. And one of the best panels is when he's talking to this guy who's now like a elected politician. Um, Clark, you know, Clark's interviewing him, and there's a panel here where it's what he wants, and it's his heat vision just blasting the guy in the chest. And I, I think it's a it's a good side of Superman to see. We don't, you know, like his actual vulnerability and his psych, his how psychologically oh, damaged he is because of this acting and this man's stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree entirely. Um, you know, like, the some people out there would be like, yeah, Superman wouldn't even think about doing that, about heat visioning this guy in the chest. I'm like, well, apparently you just think of Superman as this, like, holier-than-thou character. Like... I think of Superman as somebody to look up to because he is a guy. He has these thoughts. He has, you know, he has doubts in his mind. He has emotions and troubles and worries. And he still persists to do the right thing and be a good guy. Like, he's tried in his belief of, in, in, in his morals, his ethics. He's tried in that, in his life, in the world that surrounds him. It, it tries it tries to test those in him. And those thoughts and things creep his those thoughts and those doubts creep into his head, but he persists nonetheless. Mm -hmm. That's Superman. Yes. You're you're absolutely correct. That is Superman. And because the thing about Superman is always you have to focus on the man. It's part of what's supposed to make him different from like Kara, who if you look at it is more Kryptonian because of her time spent on Krypton and aid in Um
you know, there's a great quote in here that Clark says, it's easy to move on when you're the victimizer and not the victim. And it's a very interesting story for Superman to have been the victim of something. Yeah. Uh, in the final page of the story here, he's same as everywhere. The city was full of people who lived well because of others who were exploited. Kozlov thrived in, thrived in the past uh, because few people cared to stand against him. Ironically, his only crime now was capitalism. Uh, would anyone care how he made his money? Does anyone ever care enough? Yeah, I care. No matter the consequences, I will always care. And during those panels, we see Clark notice some the police, some issue, runs down an alley, shirt rip, two. Great story. Great story. Yeah, it, it was. John um, Ridley wrote it. The next one is called A Measure of Hope. And this one, I think, is my. Uh, very hard to pick, but it's written by Brandon Easton, who was the writer of <clears throat> uh, Truth and Justice, number two. And it starts out at a funeral with a with a man talking. You know, mom, so sorry. I should, I should, you shouldn't have died alone. And he's holding her urn, and in the reflection, he sees Superman. And you know, he says the the character we learned his name was Melvin, and he says Superman, you can't. I can't believe you're here. And he says, my apologies. I should have been here earlier. And it's, it's one of those stories that's kind of interesting to show how old Superman is. Because Melvin looks like he's in his mid-20s, an adult. But the story of, like, what this is about takes place when Melvin was a child and wrote Superman a fan letter. When we yeah, see Superman, he looks, he's drawn like he looks like he could be, like, 13, 14 years old. You think so? I, I think that he's a young pubescent boy in, okay. in this um, so, I mean, easily a decade from now, it right. could be. He's we'll say a grown man. We'll say 10 years. Yeah. Years. Um, but we find out, you know, we see Superman, um, about the school shutting down, you know, and he wanted to see Superman. He talked about having to get out earlier. He saw Superman take down a villain and he comes home early and he finds his mom basically doing heroin. Mm-hmm. And there's a great thing where he comes in, um, and it's the bottom panel is basically a representation of the world chat. Um, he says, my mom had been laid off from her job as a legal secretary. I knew she'd be home, and I'd surprise her with my incredible news. He comes home to find her doing drugs. And then, you know, you see Superman in the panels when he was reading the letter. Uh, and, uh, you know, Melvin and Superman are talking about the situation. And then uh, it cuts back. We see the mom trying to talk with Mel. And he's got Superman sheets and blanket. And uh, it's just very strong stuff. Yeah, it's it's a very yeah it's a very tough story because she is talking to her son about how she um she's she's stuck like the choices that mm-hmm. she made you know she's tried she's trying to make better choices but she continues to make the wrong ones but she hopes that her son can make better choices growing up. and she, you know he asked what she hoped. A better tomorrow. That's the only way to measure hope. By your capacity to believe that things can improve. Otherwise, no point giving up. And then, you know, it kind of cuts back to the funeral. And Melvin tells Superman that they found her body. Um, and Superman gives him a hug.
Yeah, she had gotten a bad batch of heroin, and and they found her body, and it killed her. Um, uh, they he put the photograph um, that she had in her purse of of him and her when they were younger um, on her funeral program. And what's really nice is, you know, he's not mad at Superman. Yeah. Like for not being him. able to fix it. Yeah. But they draw Superman so sad that he did that he was too late to know. I think that I think that's a perfect example of Superman. Like he knows it's not his fault, but he wants to be able to do as much as he can. Yeah, he wished he could have done more to help. And then he takes the urn with the picture and buries it on the Yeah. So that's a tough story. It's very good. And and I think that's why it's my favorite. Uh, the next is the boy who saves Superman. And it's basically one of those Superman's fighting and he's injured. And he falls into a, a building. And it starts, and this is what I like, it starts with what you learn is it's the boy a little older interviewing for a position at the Daily Planet. And then it cuts, and it's basically Clark remembering the story. So the quote-unquote present time is in blue predominantly, and the past is in red. And you see that Superman was fighting, um, and he's weak, and, and the boy's like trying to get him safe. The apartment building's coming down. Uh, even in all this mess, like Superman is like a giant robot alien thing trying to get up and we see the apartment building falls and crushes the kid's hand and Superman like gets up uh, and he says to the kid Superman says I've got to get you to a hospital and he says I'll be okay we must save our people go and Superman goes, and he stops the, the monster. And uh, at the end, you know, you kind of have Clark meeting the boy. Uh, and he he says, the, the boy goes, I want to introduce myself. And he says, Abdi. And he says, I mean, I've seen your work. It's incredible. I'll make sure to put in a good word with you with the chief. Uh, you know, it's just, it's really great because, you know, it's another story of Superman inspiring people through his actions. Kind of that uh, he became the recipient of the high tech star left prosthetic hand. Uh, and at the end, he says, you're well, Mr. Kent. He says, call me Clark. Well, it's nice, you know, that, you know, Superman inspires that in people. But at some times like this, this story, Superman gets to actually experience the, the, good, the, the good heart, the bravery of somebody else, of a child um, like this, um, who's more worried about Superman and more worried about other people than he is himself, you know. And then, um, as, as it says, says he, he followed him, um, like he, he knows who he is. He graduated top of his class in photography, uh, returned to his old home to record the damage as a journalist in the Peace Corps. He earned a master's in political, uh, philosophy, ran a marathon, and he saved Superman's life. So, like, not only is he a good person, a he has a good heart, but, but he's intelligent, very strong-willed. So um, it's nice when Superman can see that and admire people because everybody looks up to him, but there are people, regular people, that Superman admires. Yes, there are. And I think that's something that does not get brought up. 
Yeah, I mean that 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 goes with the um that goes right hand in hand with you know Superman. Uh, Superman is all all good and godlike, like you know that. I mean, from that perspective, you almost picture Superman as looking down on everybody when he's when he you when he looks around the world and sees the good just enough to to lift himself back up when he's feeling down, he's having problems when he's having doubt. The world helps to lift Superman back up because he's just a guy. People don't see that, or at least enough people don't see it. Mm. So the next, I'll tell you, this one was interesting. Yeah, this is a weird story. <laughs> um, it's basically, it starts in black and white, and this alien being has in all the color. Um, he's trying to like, get like a fifth dimensional being and trying to find a way to get the colors back trying to have them explain what are colors. Um, And then, you know, he talked to Batman about the responsibility of, he has this basically Pandora's box with all the colors. But, like, along with those colors comes, like, human emotion. Um, The blue of the sky, the... uh, red red rage and um you know things like that like in this world there's no there's no war and things like that because everybody is so so gray not just their color but like it it does something to their attitude to their personality you know not having color not having difference there's no highs there's no lows yeah everything's just bland and in the middle one panel I really do like in this uh, one page is when they've got Batman and Superman together and Batman's just all black and, you know, all black with like the little white eyes and white around him for like the city. And Superman is all white, just the little black lines mm-hmm. that, that show him. Yep. I really think that's an awesome looking, uh, an awesome looking page. You know, it's like kind of reminds me of like that movie Equilibrium. Where they all take their special medicine to control their emotions and human emotion is outlawed. Mm-hmm. So, and then, you know. I like that movie. I do, too. It's totally underappreciated. And Gives us uh, Christian Bale and, and our new jor Angus McFadden. Yep. And basically, Superman chooses to unleash the color, and it's like, he had chosen the color of love, and it, it, it emanated. Literally, I can't talk. Emanated. I know. I can't talk. <laughs> uh, out Good. across the world, heart throbbed with passion, and lovers threw their arms around one another. It was the color of fire, it flamed again, and heart bring courage in hearts to toast the toes and marshmallows. It was the color of anger, the color of blood. As red anger wars raged again. So, and then he chose the color to status as it. What, Sayla? Um, emanated across the world. Silent funerals erupted in wailing. It was the color of music. It was the color of water. The color of blood signed the vein. That's the blue. So it is very interesting. It says, he brought back the, us the most human of color and all the others followed for it. Better and worse, we became all the way human. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting story. It definitely works very well as like this in this format, the one-off style, like short story. Yeah. Well, it also it also makes a complicated choice for Superman in that story, just being being so mundane about just the colors and and the way of, the way of life, the way of the world. I mean, when they describe the, they describe red as love and anger and blood and war and, you know, blue as in music and sadness and water and, and blood in the veins and, you know, life and everything. Like, he, he, he still had to make a difficult choice on what makes people 
people, what makes them human, um, and, you know, that be releasing the colors and wars beginning again, fires happening. Yeah. So, I mean, it's still a difficult choice that Superman has to make in that story. Because mm-hmm. <clears throat> basically, it's it's that the old debate of what is life without emotion? What is the world without emotion? Um, you know, what is what is good? What is uh, good, good without evil? You know, what is you know the, the to love and lost and to never have loved at all kind of thing. Like where you know, how do we feel? I am. Yeah, it's a steep. Now, the last one of this book, The School of Hard Knock Knock Goats, I liked a lot. Um, I, re- I actually showed it to Solomon um, because it is a story. It is Clark Kent's first day of kindergarten. And you see the mom and pa getting him ready. And he's talking about, uh, what if I can't make friends? And then you see mom and pa's thought bubbles. What if the other children know he's different? What if they think he is a freak? And their worries. One well, of the first panel is he's ready for school, but he's floating. He's not even on the ground. Right. So. He gets on the bus. He's going to school. He's telling himself, you can do this. You can do this. But it's, it's, it's cute because it's don't accidentally float. Don't run too fast. Don't see all red and anger. Don't wait. It's happening. I'm making friends. I think the teacher likes me. I know cool things to paint. I know fun things to play. I know the best joke. I did it. I did it. And, you know, we see him coming home. And they're like, tell us about it, Clark. And It's then, nice, though, when he gets home, he gets off the bus, he can finally be himself. All that excitedness. He super speeds. He runs real fast. He flies. He's real happy. <laughs> yeah. That's all kids ever want to do is just be themselves. Mm-hmm. He says, I was doing it too. And I really had done it too, dot, 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 until Samantha. And it says, she didn't do anything mean. Why do they make her play alone? If the kids in the class are all so nice to you, why are they rude to her? Are they bad people? No, they're not bad people. And they're so nice to me. I don't want to lose my new friends. And my parents were so worried. And I love that he's wrestling with this as a child, as a kindergarten. Um, you know, he sees something going on and he goes into him talking about what he's done and how people have reacted. Uh, he said, I had hoped other people would show me what to do. And then it says later that day, he's back at home. And he's kind of telling his parents about her and what's going on. And Jonathan says... What are you going to do about it? He says, what? I'm five. And I love the parents for spots. Ma's only five and Pa's already five. Like just that thought of looking at their kid. Wow. And then he says, Clark, if you see a problem, especially if it affects another person, you must always see yourself as someone who can help solve that problem. Just seeing it and being bothered by it is not enough. If these new friends are worth having... Then when you are, you are kind to this little girl, they'll be kind to her. Maybe these other children don't know any better yet, but you do know better, and you know better. Your responsibility is to give what you can to help others, and whether they know it or not. This is the biggest help to give. I mean, that's, that's some weight for a five-year-old. Yeah. You know, and like I try to tell Solomon something similar because he's doing this thing where it's called like little ranchers, where it's like a, he's, the kids get together on this farm and do stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to show him, like, look, man, introduce yourself to different kids, talk to them. Um, you know, try, that whole trying to make friends, like, it's so weird and interesting at this age. And I'm like, look at the kids who don't have anybody. You know, say hi to them. Talk to them, too, you know. Um, Because Solomon's very usually outgoing. Um, It cracks me up when he does these videos for his online schooling because the kids are very shy, kind of, like, back. And he's like, hey, guys, it's me, Solomon. 
Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's just adorable. Like, he's all well, excited. You've gotten him used to being in front of the camera and talking on the podcast and things like that. So he's ready to go. He's he ready is. and raring to go. Little game show host, man. Uh, Gary told me he's going when he grows up. He's going to do a podcast on Godzilla. So awesome. <laughs> This is Solomon on the Godzilla podcast. Each week we talk about everything that is and was Godzilla. Right. Um, but, you know, it's, I love, I love it because it's such a simple lesson of just trying to make friends and being kind. And he goes over to her and he says, hi. And she's like, do you like horses? He's like, I do. And then he's like, he's scared at first. Like, what if they see me? What if they don't want to be my friends anymore? What if they hate? What if they're mean to me too? And then he sees them, and they're coming over, and he says, "What are you playing?" And she says, "Horses." He says, "Oh, cool. Y'all want to play tag? That's running, so it's kind of like horses." Sure. Clark, are you coming? Says Samantha. Yeah, I'll be right there. And he, I love the last game, where it's like the shadow of Superman. You know, of what's to come. So, and then it's yeah. like, and then at the end it's like Friday, and it's just, oh, there they are, so the bus pulls up, and Ma's outside, and Clark gets off, like, Ma, Pa, you see one kid, like, hello, Mrs. and Mrs. Kent, what a sleepover is going to be. And I guess they're having a sleepover. And, uh, it's just, you know. More knock-knock jokes. Yep, more knock-knock jokes. Let me see. Looks like it's a blended sleepover, boys and girls, at kindergarten. So, okay, cool. I mean. Well, you certainly can't do it when they get older. <laughs> There's a very <laughs> small window for that kind of thing. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, this this story is really good. It's, um, I mean, all of these stories are really good in their own way. Uh, this is really nice to see. I mean. This shows you right in here, right in this little story. I mean, how worried the the parents are about Clark, about um, the way other people see him. It kind of reminds us of something, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, worried about how things are and about making friends and and you know the abilities and stuff. Um, and they don't. And in this story as well as, like, Man of Steel, which is what I was talking about, reminds us of something. Um, they don't tell they don't tell Clark what to do. They don't give him the answers. They don't give, you know, it's not necessarily what is the right answer. They, they give him a choice and they give him a perspective. And, and he makes a choice. He makes a decision, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's part of, that's part of Clark and who he is. And no matter what happens, he makes the right decision. He still, he still goes to talk to this young girl, play with her and then everybody else. And then it gets them two together and everybody else wants to play, you know? Mm -hmm. So he, he helped somebody out. I mean, yeah, it's just... That story reminds me a lot of those flashback scenes in, in Man of Steel, mm -hmm. even the teenage flashback scenes. I agree. I agree. And it's, it's a different perspective on all different ways to tell. All right. Superman Red and Blue, issue two. What cover did you get? Uh, I think I got the uh, original. I think I got the basic cover Yeah. Um, by Nicola Scott. The one where it's like uh, honestly, Superman there was, and the American flag behind him. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I, I would say it was probably the one I didn't dislike. This this time there there wasn't a specific cover that I was like, oh, that's a really good cover. Because I, I check them out and, you know, Bermejo's was the best cover in last issue. And honestly, this one didn't have any great covers, so I got the cover A. <laughs> I, I like this cover as far as how big symbol is. His, right. His face is all right. It's a little bulky, 
don't the American flag behind it's you know red and blue, but okay. Um, but yeah, there wasn't a cover that stood out that I really was loved this time around. Um, so it is kind of funny. I mean, I like the original cover for issue one too. I just prefer Bermejo over anything else. So yeah, got got my favorite cover on that one. <laughs> So let's jump into Superman Red and Blue, number two. First story. Oh, I like this. Mm, me too. This story is all from Ma Kent's perspective. She is uh, sitting with some ladies having lunch. And uh, let's see how they phrase it. They basically say, you know, it's great that you and Johnny had a child, even if you couldn't, you know. Martha's like, well, I'm not sure. What What do you mean go on? Have one of your own. And she's like, ah, oh, let me just say yeah, this. Like, like, being a, like being adopted, you know, there's, there's something wrong with a child being adopted. Right. She's like, Which, you know, people are you, still looking at it this way. I, I don't, yeah, dude, don't even get me started. I have to start a whole new podcast on I mean, this, like, that, that's still the way of the world. Like, I mean, and let's just say how, it, and these would be the same people who are like, like you know, pro life, but then yep. couldn't care less about the child who needs to be adopted. Yep. And then they make it so hard and so expensive to adopt a child when all you're trying to do is give a, a person who doesn't have anyone a place to live and some people to love. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's not. Family is not just about blood. Say that for damn sure. Yeah. Yes. Like me, I don't got friend. Got family. <laughs> uh, so Ma- Martha says, Nora, let me just say this, if I may. If having one of your own oh, quote means worrying your boy's not getting enough sleep at night, but he works himself to the bone, and it's cool because when she says this, like we see him as Superman. If it means one of he's stuck oh yeah, in the she, of a she busy knows day. she knows what her son is doing, even though nobody yeah. else does. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> if if he stopped in the middle of his busy day as well, just now, to have himself a good meal, the kind that would fix him if he was home with us instead of their working metropolis, you know, so he was the strength and injury he needs to face what they throws at him, and <laughs> like it's just funny because like you know throws at him and super. This, that. Um, and I'm certain you ladies know that any day can damn well bring a challenge completely un- unlike what you imagined when you woke up that morning. And they're like, oh, it's true, so true, sorry. And then Martha's like, her eyes fixate. If having your own means giving your child advice, the advice you know he or she or they are not going to eat. And then we have this great, like, picture at the bottom of Superman and there's like all of his robes basically Mixie yeah, all, and especially his powerful robes they got Parasite, Mixie, Doomsday Livewire uh, who else we got here, a Brainiac and a- another alien species is that Bizarro maybe yeah look, I'm a, oh. um, and then the next page you see like Superman all beat up sitting for the parents it says, if staying up a little late to hear that door latch catch, simply so you can sneak a glimpse and verify with your own two eyes that the most precious part of you, your child, heard or not, it's okay. And then the, the two ladies are like, uh. <laughs> then all I can say to your blessings from on high is you can stick and <laughs> <it> stop. <laughs> Ma! <laughs> they're like, you can't. We should just, we were just talking about you. However, did you get so handsome? Oh, I take after my pa. Here comes Clark, his Smallville pro sweater on. And then he's so, he's nice to them. Like, you're both looking. And then she's in her, and his pa, Jonathan Trudy, doesn't answer to John. And then, uh, she, Clark's like, I'm sorry I'm so late, ma. Sure you had a good reason. Ready to go? I am indeed. Just one more thing. Nora Trudy, he is a... 
Yeah. It's really, it's, it's a really nice story. It was very, very loving. Um, and I love how her at the diner with the ladies is all red. And every time she's talking about Clark and, and they're showing us Superman, it's all blue. Mm -hmm. Um, so you got blue panels and red panels. And then in the end, when Superman shows, when Clark shows up, like the top panel is the three ladies, it's red. And then the next panel, the middle panel, is Clark coming in, and the entire panel is blue. Everything that would be red that's red in the panel with the ladies mm -hmm. is blue. And then he comes into the panel in the bottom, and Martha is now blue with him, and the other ladies are red. And then, and then on the next panel, it's kind of the same thing. Her, her, her and him are blue, and then when she pauses and says, I am indeed just one more thing. Like her last little like anger is in red. And then when she and, says, but you've got a transition to blue on her in that panel. Yes, you do. Yeah. Like fades, like she has a blue shadow. And when she says he is our own, it's almost purple. It's like the red and the blue. And then on the other side of it, it's blue. I'm just thinking like this may be my favorite of this. It's in my top two. I'll say that. Um, the next one um, is interesting. Yeah, I actually wanted to talk about that because the next one is one of my favorites. And maybe just because of the thing that's going on right now. Everything that's going on right now. We've got a story with Val Zah. Yeah. So we, get, we, get, we actually get another we get a multiverse Superman character. Last last issue, it was all Clark, and all the other stories in this um, involve Clark, except for this one. This one, we've got Val Zod. He is the Superman in this story. Um, so it was really cool to see Val Zod back from Earth Two, um, which you know I am actually reading Convergence right now because Earth Two actually goes all the way to Convergence, and then Earth Two Society picks up after Convergence. Yep. So um, I'm I'm reading Convergence right now. Um, so it's I've got a, a close connection to Val Zod currently reading his books, um, and I've I've always I've really I really like the um, I really like the costume that Val Zod. Uh, wears with the blue, um, the blue and the white, mm -hmm. and uh, and no trunks. Yep. Um, and a little bit of red. It just, yeah, and a little bit of red. It looks, it just looks really good on that character. And I don't know if it's the colors, you know, like, like you know, him him being a black person, the black skin, and and having the the white pop out from mm -hmm. the blue, and 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 his skin tone. But um, I think it, it's really cool, and I love people. I love seeing people cosplay as Valzad too. I agree. Val, like I said, in comics, you know, kind of taking it back to the things we talked about before. Comics, I like seeing the Valzad stories. But if I was going to build a movie, I easier build out. Um, right. Because Valzad well, like has said, his if you were gonna... and everything is very comic logic based of of everything you know you have the whole earth 2 the earth 2 uh rebuild of the justice league and emergence and all that so. yeah well you know like i said they're not going to do the movie like the story that we get valzad introduced in but if they used valzad in in the movie as a as a superman on another earth portrayed by a character, you know, portrayed as a character of color as he is, like, it would make for a much more interesting story as well as honors, honoring a character that they already have who is of that race, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I, don't, I don't see them doing that story, especially since they canceled New Gods, you know, just because Darkseid showed up in <laughs> friggin' Justice League. Um I mean, who knows how far it ever got? I mean, they've been, it was announced, what, three years ago, right after the 2017 movie came out that she was doing it. So three and a half years ago, it was announced and it I has gone so. nowhere. Like, no casting, nothing. Pre production hell, basically. Yep. 
So, I mean, if it ever was going to go anywhere, now they're just probably using it, using Snyder as a scapegoat. Yep. Probably. But, uh, you know, it, it was cool to see Calvin Ellis in this story. He, um, uh, people are kidnap uh, something is kidnapping people. Um, and he is calling the person who's with him, uh, the, the being who's with him, he's calling him crypto. Um, and the, the text bubbles are drawn in a bone shape when crypto is speaking. Uh, we find out that he is actually a animal, uh, a dog like <laughs> person. Um, maybe a dog like part machine, part person from the art. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Um, but crypto is speaking, so it is intelligent. It's not, you know, it, it has the capability of speech. Doesn't necessarily mean it's intelligent. We know this today, but <laughs> <It's our time. laughs> um, he is speaking. Yeah, <laughs> he is speaking. Um, so it's kind of cool. We got crypt, uh, we, we got Balzad and crypto, um, and we find out that the person, the person kidnapping people, is Prometheus. Um, I'm not very familiar with this character. When I think of Prometheus, but I he does think of getting his arm. He was the one who got his arm cut off, right? By, uh, and everything in that whole, uh, fight. Oh, you know what? Uh, I think that's the Prometheus that I am familiar with, but that's about all I know of, really. Yep, sounds about right. Um, yeah, I don't know of a Prometheus who can um, come in and out of, because they call into the, the, the name of this story is called Into the Um I don't know somebody who can go in and out of different dimensions, like this ghost zone, this ghost realm. So that's something new to me, but also this is Earth 2. So this could be kind of an original Prometheus. Um, yeah. I feel like this story is like something that, like, I want to see the conclusion of this art, you know, like, so, yeah, but it was good. It was, it was like you said, it was cool to see, um, a, um, how do you call it? An, an, a multiverse super. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for this being a, anthology series um i mean balzad he's his character was inspired by clark kent clark kent on earth 2 died and and when he finally came out he took the s shield the house of l symbol as his own to pay honor and tribute to clark kent to pay honor and tribute to superman mm-hmm so it's nice, you know, we got another, we got another Kryptonian who is, um, doing all he can because of Superman and becoming his own Superman in his own right. Yep. That's um, cool. Yeah. Uh, the nice thing about this story too, is they give, they give Valzad, like Valzad in Earth 2, he... Um, you know, he's a pacifist character. His his first go-to is not fighting. Um, which actually, honestly, in my opinion, probably would work extremely well in a 20th century period movie about a black man in America, right? Yep. Isn't that isn't that um everything <laughs> that um the the civil rights movements uh were about? Mm-hmm. Um, the sit-ins and everything. I mean, if you did that, that'd be. Uh, I, that that kind of does sit. That kind of just seems like that would fit perfectly with the idea that's floating around out there about what this new movie would be. Anyways, um, yeah, he's the, fighting is not the first thing he goes to, and so in this story, you know, I won't let go. Um, crypto, he won't let go. Yeah, it's just. Um, his his first priority is saving this saving this ship, saving all the slaves on this ship. All right, great story. Um, definitely like to see more of. 
Like I said, I, I would well, love to see a book of... The thing that gives me a little confidence here about that mm-hmm. is it says at the on the last panel, it says the end question mark. Yeah. Um, Maybe we'll be able to get to see more Valzad moving forward in the comics somewhere. I like just get his own book. I'd love for him to get his own book. Superman Valzad. I mean, is what right there. Superman Calvin Ellis. Like, give me two titles, you know, in this kind of like on like it's a new Superman title. They can um, each get their own book, like 12 issue, like, you know, or six issue art or whatever, the mini series to kind of expose the character and see if, like, we want more of that individual character. Because I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing these stories brought to life more um, than these little parts where if you're like, oh man, I want to read this story by this Superman. It's like, where is he at? Well, you got to dig, dig, dig. Like, uh, so. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just like like you said, Superman, Balzot, Superman, Calvin Ellis. You know, we've got Superman, the son of Kal-El coming out. It's a John-centric book. Yeah, and I'm surprised um, there's not a John story in here, kind of. Or like, you know, the red and blue could have been. Could have done a couple more uh, other world Superman. I think it would have been nice. Um, well, this is still supposed to be a six-issue thing, isn't it? So I, I don't remember. Is it? like I think. I think my um, initial I'll, I'm actually going to look, but I think that's what it was. So we still have lots of anthology stories to come. For some reason, I think it was two-parter, but that could just be because I was just, you know, I don't know. There's so much that goes on that it's sometimes hard to keep track. Up oh, six issue, yep. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome, yeah. So let's let's see what where it goes on. I for some reason I was thinking it was just two, but I don't know. There's so much going on. The next story. Oh called, yeah, everything's changed in the last in the last six months. <laughs> called patience is Lex Luthor style. Um, he basically he gets a package delivered, and it's I'm gonna guess it's red kryptonite just because it's red and blue. But he's holding a glowing red crystal. He's building a armor suit and he's talking about it you know he's talking about um wanting to take down superman and it's like he's going through different scenarios and he says perhaps i'm overthinking things too much something simple simplifying things can have less room for error and then it shows him like in a different kind of suit with a gun and then he you know cuts back <clears throat> to him in his office Maybe making things a little more personal isn't necessarily a bad idea. So then it's Superman and Lex in a boxing match, and hopefully his gloves are enhanced with, like, the dust of that crystal. And he's, he's beating on him, and Superman wins. And then, um, basically, Luther decides to take it, put it in a box, and put it in a container because he doesn't know. Um, he says, Miss Garnett... Yes, Mr. Luther, the container. Yes, sir. Return it. And we see her putting it on the shelf. Because basically, Luther doesn't know what to do with it right now. He's overthinking everything. And that's an interesting story. Um, that Luther, in a way, is his own worst enemy because he can't decide what to do um, to destroy Superman. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he comes out patience. What does he say? Uh, patience, they say, is a virtue. Um, he says, sadly, patience feels too close to passivity, a quality I despise in men. So, in his in his I, in his mind, it's it's um, let me keep doing something, keep doing something, keep doing something um, to try and stop Superman, to try and take down Superman, um, and and. Uh, in the end, I mean, that's the name of it. It's patience. He says, put the container back. So what he's doing, he has to sit and think on, it, you know, mm-hmm. he, he's not, he, he's just doing idea after idea. He's not having the patience for the right idea to come to him. Right. So it's, which it's, he's the bad guy, so it doesn't, but whatever. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So the next one is my other favorite 
in this one just because I like the simplicity and I just have a thing for like kids, you know. It's basically show and tell. And the girl brought in a piece of um like debris. She says it's a piece of metal from a robot that came from outer space. And the it's called My Best Friend Superman by Stephanie Phillips. Um and it, they're basically the kids are like, Oh, you're you're not supposed to bring garbage and tell lies for show and tell, Ava. And they're picking on her and saying things. And the one kid says, Bigfoot's my best friend. Oh, that's my brother right there. And she says, I'm not lying. I, I did see Superman. And Superman is my friend. And it kind of cuts back to her telling the story. And how, you know, she uh, met Superman. And, um, you know, it's her memento. And, you know, it's really great because Superman tells her, like, or he says, you know, uh, it's very brave and things that you've done, but this situation is very dangerous and I want to make sure you're safe. I want to help. I'm not a hero, but, and he says, there are different, many different kinds of heroes and not all of them have superpowers. You know, and then it cuts back to the class and they're making fun of her. And the teacher, of course, the kid picking on people's name's Tyler. What a douche. Giving us bad names. <laughs> um, you know, the kids are going to go to the playground. And then, um, you know, she's sitting down and they call her Super Dwee. They take her drawings. They take her cape. You know. And then, you know, douchebag Tyler here says, hey, guys, now I'm Superman. And then you see this voice say, I guess that makes two of us. And then Superman shows up. And it's good to see you again, Ava. I want to thank you for your help. Um, and she said, I didn't do anything. And then Superman basically um, says, you know, your actions make you a hero. And he takes his cape off and gives it to her. And um, he's like, isn't that right, Tyler? Dang it, stupid Tyler. Um, I guess I'm sorry I called you a liar and took the cape. And then everyone's like, no, I'm on Superman's team. Yay, no, yay. And the last panel, Superman winking back at Ava. It's just a good story. Um, I like it. It's simple. You know, it's a simple lesson for kids to learn. Um, you know, and Superman doesn't, he's not mean to anybody. It reminds me of that. It reminds me, like, do you remember that, uh, Part I think it was in season one, a Supergirl, where the little girl is dressed up as Supergirl and she's coming to get on the bus, and they're picking on her, and she is talking about like she loves Supergirl, and then Supergirl like hears it as she's flying and she drops down and uses her uh, X-ray vision and sees the girl's name on her backpack, and talks to her as her friend and then says something and flies off, and all the kids are like, oh my gosh, so, right. And then we um, have Oh, it's really cool is she gets her cape taken um by that boy and uh Superman gives her his cape. So yeah. in the end of the story, she's wearing his cape, not him. The, the last one is another kind of I guess you could say um other world Superman. Um it is actually a kind of futuristic cyborg Superman. It's more dark. And um, kind of, I mean, creepy. Because it uses more blacks and everything. Um, yeah. It's interesting how cyborg Superman is black and red. And it's Henshaw. Because Clark even yeah. says, hey, Henshaw, when he shows up. Or Superman. Um, yeah, like, it's not New 52 Zorel Cyborg Superman. So it this one was one of those like okay, uh, I I was okay with it. It's not it's my least favorite. It's, um, I mean, it was cool to see Cyborg Superman back and doing something evil, um, but. I mean, that's probably the most, the best thing about the, the story 
is we got a villain for Superman to punch. Yeah, I I, I, I will agree. Um, yeah. Cyborg Superman created this. Um, uh, what what did he call it? I'm a creator. Thought he called it something. Um, he will be my dog of death. I mean, that's what he says. But, um, you know, once, once he released it, it killed all the scientists and, um, he's using it to, uh, he's powering it up. Just basically another weapon of his. But yeah, I mean, it's cool. We get, uh, Superman saving who he can, the janitor. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, getting to to punch Henshaw a few times, knock him out, knock him around, and he says, and and the, the ending was him using his head more than his fists, though. He says the junior says, but Cyborg with, and his death dog, they will. And Superman says, without humanity to govern its use, power only destroys. And yeah, what do you think Cyborg's energy-hungry cre- creation will do when there's no enemy left to consume? Cyborg Superman, no, stay back. So uh, it was good. I like it. Um, I think sometimes in anthology books, I like I like the stories where you're like, okay, are they going to make another one, or could they continue this, or is it just kind of a quick wink, one and done type thing? Um, yeah. Like vignette type, which I stories. think most of the stories in yeah, most of the stories in this I think are are like that. You know, they're they're your clip show, something that that's finite and just has a, a spot in in the story in a history somewhere. Um, but the Valzad story, I think here has is the the main one that has a potential to give us something else, give mm-hmm. us something new. I agree. Well, we'll put a pin in red and blue um, until I got uh, I got a date here of May 18th for the release of number three. Yep. Um, and I'm going to get the alternative and, cover. Uh, <laughs> I sent you a picture see, just now of the alternative cover that I want to get. I was going to say I see two of them, and I think I know which one I want. And then we got June 15th for number four, and it's got two of three covers on there. Ooh, I want to see that. Um, the third one's not out yet. It doesn't, at least they don't have it up on this. Um, uh, Send that link. Okay. But, all right, everybody. That was a good time. You know, dipping into r- red and blue. Let us know your thoughts. And remember, 